Hi, I'm Colleen and I blog over at Just Paint It. And today I'm going to show you um, a real simple way to paint hydrangea. Okay, just the little uh, ball like flowers that come in a, a huge range of colors. There are as many ways to paint flowers as there are varieties of flowers themselves. But um, today I wanted to show you a way to do um, what I call wet blending and that's when I use two colors, two or more colors of paint at once on the canvas or today I'm using watercolor paper. And this is um, an ongoing series that I'm teaching called How to Paint Simple Spring Flowers and um, last week we covered basic five petal flowers and hydrangea are actually made up of um, clusters of four petals. And so I'm going to show you how to um, blend the colors to get the real pretty um, hydrangea blue and a little bit of violet today. And um, you can also use this four petal method for lots of other flowers as well. But right now I'm going to just show you how to do some wet blending. To start with, um, I wanted to um, create just a ball of color and so I'm going to use, I use regular craft paint, okay, it's nothing, um, you know, not an artist color even, you, you can use artist tube acrylics that will work great, but um, this is really economical if you're just starting painting and I just happen to, to always use craft paint. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a ball of color. And um, you can make your individual colors by doing the four petals, but um, this is going to go a lot faster. And I think you're going to find you're going to get a very nice result just doing this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the blue and just a little bit of the violet. Okay, so that's the two colors together. And then I'm just going to create a ball just by kind of dabbing it on not really any um, particular uh, rhyme or reason at the moment. And I'm going to try and do it so it's not too heavy so it will still um, dry in the time that we're talking here today. And all I'm doing is creating a background color. That's it. Okay. I'm going to come back later and actually do the four petals on top of this here and there. But right now we're just going to get the color going. And then I'm going to show you um, by sketching a little bit of how these four petals work together. Just a blob, okay? But you can kind of see, looks a little light on there. I'm going to add a little bit more violet so that you see a bit more depth. Remember your darker colors always recede. They make the canvas go away from you and your lighter colors bring it forward. So I always use a combination of light and dark. Let me get rid of this bar here so that you can see. So I'm going to start with that ball. I'm going to let that dry. Okay, and in the meantime I'm going to show you um, just with a simple marker what I mean by a four petal cluster. I can. Um, I think I showed you on this, and you can see the little. This is more of an illustration type flower, and these are actual printables that I put up on the blog. You can print them off, and they're blank, and then you can color it in. You just water down. For this um, type, I just watered down the same blue that I'm using here, and put it on. You know, so it's great for kids too. But it's a nice little Mother's Day gift. But you can see the four petals: one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's going to go on top of this ball here, okay? So, what you would start with, if I was actually drawing that hydrangea there, just so that you get an idea why I say four petals. So, I'm going to start with one petal here, and it can either have the little point at the top or not. That's up to you. Can you, can you see? It's, you can kind of see that, can't you? Okay. All right. I could make it a little bit larger, I guess. And then right up, up opposite of that, opposing that, same type of petal. 
Okay, then you're going to come across and do the same thing. Now, if you say, well, I can't draw, don't worry about it. That's why I give you printables on my blog. But this is to give you a graphic illustration so that in your mind you can see what happens. And then in the middle is just a tiny little dot. Now, if I was to continue um, sketching from here, I would just continue adding little petals. Because you can't see, <clears throat> when you look at a hydrangea, actually I store, um, stole, I didn't steal, it came to me in the mail. But, to show you a good um, photo, it's a Harry and David. Can you see those hydrangea? Look at those. Are those gorgeous? Okay. But you don't see those four petals um, just like a leaf. Some twist, some turn. So that's what you want to be aware of when you're painting. You don't want it, otherwise you get a flat appearance. And you don't want it to be flat. You want it to look full and rich and dimensional. So you would just continue on adding. And you can add some more um, of your four petals coming along. Now, as you're doing this, the reason why I'm spending the time showing you this four petal, okay, and I'd add a little thing here. It's almost like if you're doing a cluster of grapes. You can't see all of the grapes at the same time, okay? And I would come along until I filled out my entire ball. And then I would just have a few of the four petals right here. But say I went with a different shape petal. Same, same principle of the four petal. Say if I went something more rounded like this, and I have done these actually for hydrangea too, just so you know. Something more a little bit like this. Okay, like a four-leaf clover, but not, not quite. Okay, so you could come along and continue on. Same type of thing, you're just adding petals, add another ball. That would be the same type of method you would use if you wanted to paint a geranium. Same exact type of thing, or I can grab this little thing, I'll show you this too. Lilacs, same, same principle. See the four petals and then the white dot in the middle? Very, very similar. So you can take a simple method, which is what we're doing in this series, is showing you a simple, one simple way to do four petals, and then you can create all kinds of flowers from that. Same thing last week, we did the five petals, and then we created I don't know, four or five flowers out of that. We'll wrap that all up in a few weeks. But right now, I just wanted to um, give you that little bit. It's not really theory because I don't know theory. I just paint what I see. But um, so that you can create more on your own and you're not limited to um, one particular uh, shape of a flower or color. Okay, you can go with, like I'm using, the blue and the violet, okay? You could use pinks, you could use, um, boy, whatever color you want. Um, a lot of times hydrangea have the green and the early growth. They have that real pretty bright green. You could pull some of that into it too. So, now that I have this blob here, all I'm gonna do is come back and kind of create the four petals. And so I'm gonna start with the um, blue, just to kind of show you. And right now, I'm just doing the opposing petals, okay, just so you get an idea. You can see that. And it's in the one color, so I'm not blending yet. And one more. You don't have to worry when you're painting flowers that it looks all perfect and everything like that. In fact, you'll get a much better end result if it doesn't look all perfect and symmetrical because flowers aren't like that. They're perfect in their um, asymmetry. Okay, now that's already wet. It's drying quickly, but it's already wet. Um, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the violet. And you can do it a couple ways. You can come along with the outline. Okay, if you want to do it like that, you could come along and bring it from the inside out and just blend it right into the blue, okay? And all that's giving you is a little bit more um, interest to your flower. I'm not sure if you're seeing that well enough. Okay, now, let's go ahead and go the other way. Let's take the violet, and this time, I've got violet on my 
brush, I'm going to add a little blue too. So I've got two colors on the brush. Violet on one side and blue on the other. Doesn't matter how much, how little, whatever. You're just going to make it work. Same thing. What happens, it's pretty thick, is um, just because you've got the two colors, you're going to get a really nice um, variegated effect and you don't even have to worry about placing the paint. It's just going to have all these striations of color. That's really the beauty of wet blending. Okay, so you get the same two colors, but you get completely different looks. All right, which is kind of fun. Okay, so if I was going to continue on um, with this ball of hydrangea, rather than continue on with four petals here, four petals there, and again getting a very flat look, I'm going to just maybe add some extra petals here and there. And you can do blue on one, purple on the other, different shapes, different directions. You know, it's all... But see, once I've laid this color down, now it's just a matter of filling it in, or not filling it in, defining it a little bit. That's a better word, defining. Okay? And you can go for two colors if you want. And I've got some blue, I've got some violet. Come down here, add a little bit more. When I started painting flowers, when I started painting everything, because I didn't know what I was doing, so I would look at the picture and try and exact copy it, um, I would start with four petals and I would just build. And it took me a very, very long time to get a one single flower finish. Well, if you're painting flowers on a wall, is what my job was, is painting murals, um, it would take quite some time to get <laughs> a garden painted. So through the years I learned to um, shortcuts. Okay, I had, to, I had to come up with shortcuts. So some of them work, some of them don't. You just kind of do the best you can. If it gets too pointy there, round it out a bit. And before long you're going to wind up with some definition. Okay, you've got some definition. Now the eye still doesn't really have a place to go. So, there's a couple things we're going to do. One is I'm going to highlight some of those petals. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to do that with white. You could have a light pink. You could have a lighter blue. White is always great to have around because um, you can mix it with the color you've got and make a lighter color. Works great. Okay, so if I come back to this first original petal that we've got, and come just over a little bit here and there on the outline. Just that little bit of white is going to give it enough definition to make that um, that cluster of four come forward a little bit. Okay, and you can you can come around here and there. You don't have to do the whole um, petal each time, but just just a little bit of white here and there and that's going to give again the light color is going to bring it forward so you're going to have a little bit coming forward and a little bit of the violet. Now you can do the same thing with the violet and um, I actually need a little bit smaller brush for that but if I wanted to I would come back with the violet if I wanted to I'm doing it so I guess I do want to and just like underneath the petal add a little bit of shading Okay, just here and there. And a rule of thumb, if you go, well, I don't really know how to do that, wherever you just highlighted, right next to that, wherever I just applied the white, next to it, apply some shading. Okay, and that's kind of a nice rule of thumb, and what's that's going to give you some nice dimension. Okay, so you can just see what, what happened there. All of a sudden, you've got some depth to that flower. And then there's one last thing that I would do, and that is just, you can take a liner brush or you can just take the end of a brush and um, with white or really any color, but I'm going to do what? 
just dot the inside of the four petal. Now, all of a sudden, what happens is the eye has a place to focus. All of a sudden, the flower starts to make sense. And even though I didn't paint the four petals here, we're just going to kind of trick the eye to make it seem like there is something showing up there, just with that little white. So you don't have to do four petals here, four petals here. Four. In fact, it's going to look a whole lot better. Um, if it doesn't, I'm going to come back to my, sorry, my lilac rather than my hydrangea. But just so you can see what I'm talking about on the white, the little dots, there's some here deeper and there's some right on top. This is very, very similar to a hydrangea painting, but it's just taken up in a cone shape. Okay, so you could pretty much um, create a lilac, and if you wanted a white lilac, same type of thing, only I would use white and shades of white and green. But anyway, so that gives you an idea. Now, if you wanted to come along and create the, um, I need some darker green in here, the um, centers that are just starting to pop. I'm not a gardener, I just arrange flowers and paint them, but I do know that those, um, at the beginning of the season, the hydrangea um, have those little bright green areas that start to come through with a little bit of color. And I think, did I do it on this? Yeah, I did. Okay, on this one I just did the same type of thing with the little dip dots, okay? Same thing here, just take the end of your paintbrush, and, you know, this is a bright green. It's not going to show really, really well from this distance, but I'll hold it up to you in a minute. And then, and again, this is just the end of the paintbrushes. I'm just dipping and dotting. And actually, um, later on in the series, I'm going to show you a bunch of different um, flowers that we can make just with different dots. Great great for kids, great for people that think they can't paint. Dip dots are wonderful because people say, I can't, I can't draw a straight line. You don't need to draw a straight line if you're painting flowers. Okay. And it just gives, again, the eye another place to focus. I'm kind of making, I'm kind of smooshing it now. Sorry, but the if it's perfectly circular, it kind of makes me twitch. <laughs> Not really. I'm just I want I want imperfection when I'm painting nature because that's what you got. Anyway, it's just a little uh, contrast. Let me show you. Just for demonstration purposes, okay? Nothing more, no no big deal. It's just a little bit of dipping and dotting. So, for your hydrangea, it's a four petal base. You can do extra flower, you can do extra, but you don't need, but remember, you're coming with two opposing. If you don't want to hand draw your own, um, or you don't want to, you know, use clip art, you can grab the printable printables from my blog. It's on there from like yesterday or the day before, I think. Print off your own. Great for Mother's Day. And if you don't want to paint hydrangea or paint hydrangea now, in the next month, paint geranium. Use the same method and use red. And then for your highlighting, you can use white um, and a darker red for your shading. You can do that really well. Or if you want to use um, pinks for geranium, you can do that too. But anyway, there, or you can make your lilacs. There's all kinds of flowers you can make with these four petals. And there's, if you want more um, theory or another type of uh, way, another way to paint hydrangea, I am going to be teaching a class uh, May 22nd. That's a Saturday, I think. Um, and that way we're going to be doing layering, which is the, you start with the light blue, add the violet, add the white, and you we spend two hours in class painting a couple of hydrangeas so you get a much better feel for it. And it's a live class just like this. Um, and then next week in uh, my Tuesday free demonstration, we're going to be doing daisy-like flowers. Okay, so if you think of a daisy, 
but then you can do sunflower, you can do black eyed Susan, you can do um, zinnias even. There's a lot of things you can do just with that simple long petal. So we'll play around with that next week. So I hope you have a great week and um, if you have any questions at all, just leave me a message in the comments. Thanks and we'll see you next week I hope.